Hi, and welcome to Chapter 6, Excel. Today we're going to go over some of the formulas found in Chapter 6. Chapter 6 isn't a particularly too difficult chapter quantitatively, but there's some important uh, formulas to calculate. One would be uh, this first page of Stock Basics that in this page, just grab this spreadsheet. I just want to... move this up so you can see the bottom bar here. So here there's the first tab is the stock basics. And we're talking about book value. So book value is simply going to be total assets minus total liabilities or debt minus preferred stock if they have any. Some companies may not have preferred stock. So this would be your book value. And once you calculate that, you could just drag that down. So if we move a little bit lower, let's we'll just go let's go over here we we'll calculate the sales per share so here is this the revenues okay and let's look a little strange like that make them even okay so here are our sales per share. Here's the number of outstanding shares. Let's calculate the earnings per share. So if, one thing I see here in the spreadsheet is that the grid lines look a little weird. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to um, add back the grid lines. And I can do that if I move this up. I can do it in this tool here. I'm just going to put all borders so it looks a little bit more. That's just a formatting error there. We'll clean that up. Okay. So revenues per share, very simple. We just, like the formula says here, sales divided by outstanding shares, and we get our revenue per share. Copy that all the way down. So when you have a lot of outstanding shares, you have small revenue per share. When you have a, only a small amount of outstanding shares, you have a large revenue per share. Okay, so let's move down to here. We have the book value per share. <clears throat> so have we we you notice here that if we we want to take the stated book values here and divide it by the number of outstanding shares. So again, again another simple formula, book value divided by outstanding shares, and we get our book value per share. And when you have more shares outstanding, you're going to have a larger book value per share. And this is really uh, trying to, again, look at if you own one share of stock, how much is that is related to the book value of the company? Okay. So let's move over and we're going to look at, where's my trying to grab this? Okay. Here it is, this little gray bar here. Move, let's look at a P, um, the stock PE ratio, which is going to be the market price, which is the stock price of the company, and we divide that by the earnings per share, and we get our PE ratio for each company. And now you see here that we have a, a div. We have a div slash zero here. So what that means when you see a div slash zero, that's really and this is just saying you can't divide uh, by zero. You just get don't get a result. And that's okay. So it's not a wrong answer. Um, okay, now moving down here, let's look at earnings per share. How do you calculate earnings per share? Well, we take our net profits. We're going to do uh, open parentheses first. Uh, net profits minus the preferred dividends because they should not be in earnings per share because earnings per share is for common shareholders. So you're going to pay the preferred dividends first. Not all stocks will have preferred dividends. So if it's not there, it's not there. You just omit it from the formula and then we divide by the outstanding shares. So I'm going to copy this down and here we get our, our earnings per share. Okay, so when you see this little dash, that means zero. So in this format, we're showing a zero. Okay, I'm moving to dividend yield. 
another simple formula where we just take the annual dividends and we divide by the stock price and we get the percentage yield. So it means that the $40 you're invested in this company is giving $2 dividend, which is a 5% yield because $2 is 5% of 40. So sort of like an interest rate. So if you had a bank account with $40 in it and they paid you $2 interest, you had a 5% yield on that bank account. Okay, so let's look at market capitalization. We look at the total shares outstanding times the stock price or market price. Uh, so market is the stock market. So when we say market price, it's the same as if we say stock price. So we take the outstanding shares and we're going to multiply it by the current stock price. And we get our market capitalization. So we get we get sort of um, this stock is worth $20 million because we have 2 million shares outstanding at $10 per share. Um, so it's $20 million. Okay. And this should really be at dollars here too, because this is, um, I see a little error here. Where I'm just gonna say insert. So what we're missing here is we're missing that there should be outstanding shares. Stock price, market cap. Okay. And I'm going to just change this alignment so we can read that better. All right. So moving over to the last sample here, we have our dividends payout. So here we have our dividends. per share and here we have our earnings per share and I just I had been cleaning up some titles I think I deleted this row by accident so and here we want to calculate our payout ratio which means what percentage of the dividends are coming from earnings so we just take the dividends divided by the earnings per share and we will get our payout ratio. So if this company pays out $2 in earnings, then an earnings of $4, it's a 50% payout. So 50% of the earnings is paid out. It's dividends. Okay. So that's the first sheet. See, relatively simple stuff here. And then the FX effect. Here we're going to calculate the effect of change in interest rates and not interest rates, the change in foreign currency rates to your actual return. So first we're just going to, how do you calculate just the basic return? So a basic return on a stock without any uh, foreign exchange differences is we're just going to say, so when I start this formula, I'm actually going to start with two parentheses because I'm going to be building a bigger equation. So I'm going to say ending value plus dividend, close that first parentheses, divided by beginning value, and then another parentheses. So that way I have two parentheses on each side and then I'm going to say minus one. So that gives us 10%. So let's just um, move that over so you see the full percentage. Now I'm going to amend the formula up here because I left out a couple parentheses. So if you're trying to follow this formula, you would need those parentheses there. Okay. Now uh, to do it one more time, I'll just say I want to start with two parentheses, ending value plus dividend divided by beginning value, close parentheses minus one to get a return. And once you have this, you can just easily just pull this down, calculate all the returns. Okay, so moving down to, I'm going to make this a little smaller so we get the full boxes in here. Um, okay, so we're going to have calculate the, the return and the foreign currency effect. So here we have the company. It's bigger, okay. And again, here I see I have one, two, so I'll need another parentheses here to be formula accurate. Okay.
So we're going to calculate it with the change in the foreign currency effect. So here there's no, you see there's no real change. So if we calculate return, we're going to make it smaller so you can see the full formula. I could probably just truncate that a bit. Okay. So we'll start the formula with an equals, two parentheses, uh, and it starts like the other formula where we take uh, ending value plus dividend, close parentheses, divided by beginning value, close parentheses, multiplied by the, let's see, open parentheses, the exchange rate at the end, divided by the exchange rate at the beginning, close parentheses, minus one. So let's see, you see the full formula there. So we have one, two, let's see, so R, one, two, one, two, uh, three, and then we have one, two. So our parentheses, we have three parentheses on the, on the right, and then we have three percent parentheses on the left. So it gives us a 10% return, which is what we got up here, because it's the same calculation, but there's no uh, currency change or effect. Um, so in the formula, let me just put this other parentheses here to make it parentheses accurate. Okay. Now, down here, when you calculate IBM, we have a a currency difference. The currency, the ending rate's higher than the beginning rate, so we see how the effect on the formula is an increase in overall return. So we want to see how does that, how did we calculate that? So let me take this problem here, and it's just really it's the same exact. You can kind of copy this formula all the way down to get all the effects here, but here. Since this is the same, these are all the same beginning, ending values and dividends. But here we have the currency increasing in value, which increases our return. And here we have the currency decreasing in value. So this should decrease our return. So if we do the same exact formula, uh, beginning value, I'm sorry, ending value plus dividend, close, oops, close parentheses, divided by beginning value, close parentheses, multiplied by the ending exchange rate, divided by the beginning exchange rate, close parentheses minus one, we get this negative 10%. So here again, um, if we look, these are different problems where the stock price is going lower, and, but the currency is increasing. Here, the stock price, again, going lower, so we're losing money in the stock price, but the currency here is um, also going down. And here's the currency going up. So just different scenarios here to look at. But, um, okay. So I'm gonna probably go back and fix the template so we'll have accurate formulas in here that I fixed on the fly here by going over the, these calculations. But here are the major calculations in chapter six using Excel. I hope you found this video useful and I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you.